Think you know what all wolves are like? Well, think again. Because some wolves truly break all the rules of what you think a wolf should or shouldn't be. These are wolves you won't believe actually exist. Number two. Number 15. Black Wolf. Black wolves form part of the gray wolf species, also known as Canis lupus. They're basically very dark gray wolves. But one thing is for sure, black wolves are extremely intriguing. They went through a genetic mutation in their K. locus gene a long time ago, which causes melanism, and that is why they're black and not gray. They mainly exist in North America because in Europe, black wolves are very rare. And to better understand this phenomenon, scientists collected the DNA in information of 150 wolves in Yellowstone National Park, of which half were black and the other half gray. They ended up unveiling a surprising genetic story, dating back tens of thousands of years. At that time, humans were breeding domestic dogs, and the overall preference was for the darker varieties. So it could be that the presence of black wolves in Yellowstone comes from the early humans breeding their black domestic canines with wild gray wolves. So this basically means that black wolves first appeared in North America. They are native to that land, and one thing is for certain, they are incredibly elegant and spooky. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now, it's time for the odd topic. We want to talk about werewolves, but as there's a debate as to whether or not they even exist, we thought we'd make it our odd topic instead of part of the main list. If you are somehow unfamiliar with the myth of werewolves, the gist is they are people who turn into wolves when the full moon is out. The reason why so many people still believe in them is that many scholars believe the oldest story known on Earth, the Epic of Gilgamesh, makes reference to one. They also appear in very early Nordic folklore. In fact, werewolves turn up in lots of the world's oldest stories way before there was any way for those people to be in contact with each other. So they had all clearly seen something that inspired their stories, right? The question is, had they all seen the same thing? And was it a werewolf? As always, comment down below with the hashtag oddtopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 13. Northwestern Wolf Also known as the Mackenzie Valley Wolf, the Northwestern Wolf is a subspecies of the Gray Wolf that lives in western North America. Its territory ranges from Alaska throughout the Mackenzie Valley and all the way to the western Canadian provinces. The Northwestern Wolf typically stands about 76 meters at the shoulder and weighs up to a whopping 66 kilograms. They were first classified as a subspecies in 1829 by John Richardson, and it's one of the largest and most common subspecies in North America. They have long and powerful legs that allow them to travel as much as 70 miles per day, and through rough terrain like rocky cliffs and deep snow, too. They can run as fast as 40 miles per hour, but only for short periods of time. Their skull alone is 12 inches long, combined with an incredibly powerful jaw and very strong neck muscles. The Northwestern Wolf can easily break bones and bring down very large prey. They prey on many different animals, but they have a preference for wood bison, elk, caribou, and moose. Their huge size is due in part to the abundance of food, and the only real threat to their existence is human beings. Number 12. Dire Wolf Unfortunately, the dire wolf is extinct now. It lived in the Americas and Eastern Asia during the late Pleistocene and early Holocene epochs some 125,000 to 9,500 years ago. It has become one of the most famous prehistoric carnivores because it was the largest wolf to ever walk the Earth. It was a fierce, powerful, and very tenacious predator. Because of their incredible size and strength, but mainly because they hunt in large packs, the dire wolf was one of the most imposing predators at the time. 
The dire wolf was so efficient that it could easily take down prey ten times its size. They would follow and hunt down their prey until the latter would go down from sheer exhaustion. There wasn't an animal they couldn't prey on. They were unstoppable. These hunting techniques allowed them to survive for more than 100,000 years. So they were doing something right. But how come they became extinct then? Well, scientists believe that their extinction occurred because all the animals they preyed upon started to go extinct themselves. They couldn't find any other food source anymore, and so that caused them to slowly fade off the face of the Earth. Number 11. Eurasian Wolf also known as the common wolf, the Eurasian wolf is a subspecies of the gray wolf native to Europe and Asia. They have shorter and denser fur than their cousins in North America, and their size varies significantly from region to region. But on average, the Eurasian wolf is 30 inches tall at the shoulder, and they weigh around 130 pounds. Females are, of course, a little smaller, like in most mammal species. They can be very varied in color. Some are white, cream, red, gray, black, and some have all the colors at the same time. They are highly sociable, and the vast majority tends to live in packs. Although, because of the shrinkage of their territory because of human presence, they form much smaller packs than they used to. But still, in some regions, like the Carpathians, the Eurasian wolf prefers to be a solitary hunter. Their diet varies a lot depending on the region and the season as well. They've been known to eat small animals like frogs and hares, and their largest prey are visant in Europe and yak in Asia. But the problem begins when they kill livestock. That is why people have been killing wolves for many years now, and it's also the reason why wolves are close to extinction. Number 10. Tundra Wolf The Tundra Wolf is also a subspecies of the Grey Wolf, a very small one, though. They only live in a little area along the coast of northern Alaska. Like most other wolf species, they also live in packs. They are highly organized and have complex social interactions, with an alpha male and female that control the group, and they are the only ones that are allowed to breed. They are very beautiful, with long and lush white fur. Because of their remote location, they are one of the very few wolf species that have never been hunted by humans. They've never known or seen how cruel humans can be. They are the ruler of their territory, with no natural or other predators. Their DNA line can be traced back to the Ice Age. They are the last of the truly wild ones. They are incredibly resilient. They are capable of enduring very rough cold weather of 60 degrees below, and also months on end of pure darkness without a hint of sunshine. Number 9. Alaskan Interior Wolf this is another subspecies from Alaska, and just like the tundra wolf, the Alaskan interior wolf has never been threatened or endangered. They live throughout mainland Alaska on Unimac Island and on all the major islands in the southeast. It has a height of 33 inches at the shoulder and an average male weight of 124 pounds, and they can hold up to 20 pounds of meat in their stomachs. They live from 4 to 10 years, and the oldest ever recorded was 12 years old. They live in relatively small packs, usually ranging from 7 to 9 individuals. They eat predominantly moose and caribou. A pack of Alaskan interior wolves will kill a caribou every 3 days during the winter and a moose every 5 or 6 days. That's a lot of meat. In the past, the local aboriginal population hunted the wolf for its fur. They needed it in order to survive the cold winters. But when the colonists came, the wolf became endangered. That's why, nowadays, there's a plan known as the Yukon Wolf Conservation Management that aims to teach locals to coexist with the wolf and to appreciate their crucial role in the food chain of their territory. Number 8. Great Plains Wolf also known as Lofer, the Great Plains Wolf is unfortunately no longer on this earth. It has been officially extinct since 1926. They lived all throughout North America, from Texas in the United States to Saskatchewan in Canada. They were described as very large and light-colored, but there were some that could be born all white or all black. 
depending on the wolf. The Native Americans from North Dakota have tales of how only three Great Plains wolves could bring down a bison of any size imaginable. Which, considering how massively huge and aggressive bisons are, that is a great feat of prowess and bravery. Their packs had one of the most sophisticated social orders seen in nature. Usually, a pack was a family group of five to eight animals. They had an alpha male and female, usually the oldest members of the pack, and they were the only ones allowed to breed. A male wolf could become an alpha, but he would have to travel very long distances to find a territory that wasn't already occupied by another pack, and also he had to find a female wolf to become the matriarch. That was not an easy feat. They had keen senses of sight, hearing, and smell. They were great travelers. They could travel at 5 miles per hour for very long periods of time. Number 7. British Columbia Wolf This wolf, as its name suggests, lives in a very narrow area that includes parts of the mainland coast and near shore islands that are covered by temperate rainforests in British Columbia, Canada. They are very large wolves, and they generally come in a cinnamon buff color. They are not closely related to mainland wolf species, and they have a very different skull shape. They look quite intimidating, with their dark coat and yellowish eyes. But Native American people have always regarded them as a sacred species. They used to observe them and learn from them. It's only in more recent history that wolves are seen as a threat to humanity instead of just another animal species that we can peacefully coexist with. It's because of this animosity that the wolf's population has declined so dramatically in the past hundred years. Before then, Native Americans would only hunt them for their fur, but they always kept a balance. They never put the wolves in danger of extinction. That all changes with the arrival of colonizers, who started massively hunting them down to sell their fur to the same Native Americans that used to hunt them as well. Number 6. Honshu Wolf this is a Japanese species of wolf, and they are also known as Yamainu in Japan. There were two species of wolves on the island, and they are both now extinct because of human interaction. The Honshu was officially declared extinct in 1905, when the last Honshu wolf died in the Nara prefecture. Measuring at about 30 inches at the shoulder and only 35 inches in length, they were the smallest known wild subspecies of the gray wolf in the world. Their population started to dramatically decrease in the 1700s when a widespread rabies virus infection started to kill them one by one. Some researchers think that the humans actually brought the virus on purpose to the island to kill all the wolves that were eating their livestock. Although they were very small in comparison to their cousins from other parts of the world, they could hunt down and kill prey much larger than themselves, like wild boar and deer. Since 1905, there have been many sightings of the Honshu wolf, but unfortunately, none have been officially verified. Number 5. Hokkaido Wolf Hokkaido is one of the main islands of the nation of Japan, and the Hokkaido wolf is native there. But it also lived in Russia, where it was called the Sakhalin wolf. Unfortunately, in both locations, the Hokkaido wolf is extinct today. It was exterminated by humans during the Japanese Meiji Restoration Period, in which an American-style agricultural system was adopted, and the use of strychnine-laced baits to kill livestock predators was widely used. It was officially declared extinct in 1889. It was the largest Japanese wolf species, and it had much more traditional wolf looks than its cousin, the Honshu wolf, because they were descendants of the Siberian wolf in mainland Asia. It was gray-colored and had a big and strong skull. They lived in packs ruled by the alpha mating couple. They preyed on animals considerably larger than themselves, but also on livestock, and that was their demise. They were formidable hunters and very resilient. Since their extinction, there's also been many sightings of the Hokkaido wolf in Japan, but as with their relatives from Honshu, none of those claims have been verified. Number 4. Arabian Wolf the Arabian wolf has a large head, a powerful jaw, and bone-crushing teeth. 
They're smaller than their European cousins, weighing on average 55 pounds. As its name suggests, it lives in the Arabian Peninsula. They like to hunt small and medium-sized prey such as hares, gazelles, rodents, and small ibexes. They also attack and eat domestic animals that are the size of a goat or smaller. And for this reason, Bedouin people and farmers usually do not hesitate to shoot, poison, or trap them. And their numbers are dramatically decreasing because of this behavior, to the point of pushing them to the verge of extinction. They are omnivorous feeders, and in some areas, they depend largely on human garbage and excess products. They are quite smaller than an ordinary wolf, but they have pretty much the exact same features. They walk with their heads down, except when alerted by potential prey or danger ahead. And although they're small, they're still very efficient predators capable of harming a human being, so it's very discouraged to approach them. Number 3. Labrador Wolf the Labrador wolf has been considered as a gray wolf subspecies since 2005, so in a way, they are brand new. They live an average of 6 to 8 years and are native to Labrador in northern Quebec in French Canada. They are on the verge of extinction and, sadly, they are one of the least studied and observed species of wolf in the world. That means that we don't have much information about them, making them quite mysterious. I mean, most people don't even know that the Labrador wolf exists. Not even people that live in Labrador. They're very large wolves. On average, they weigh from 75 to 140 pounds. There are very few photographs or videos of this species, and especially of the ones in the wild. They prey on moose, musk ox, hares, and many different rodents, which means that they are extremely agile and capable of catching the elusive small animals, as well as being able to take down huge prey like a moose. They seem to be fascinating creatures, and it would be a shame if they disappeared before we could know more about them. Number 2. Northern Rocky Mountain Wolf Finally, a wolf success story. The Rocky Mountain Wolf is also a subspecies of the Grey Wolf, and as the name suggests, it lives in the Rocky Mountains in North America. In March 1978, the subspecies was listed as endangered, but they lifted that classification in the year 2000 because thanks to the Northern Rocky Mountains Wolf Recovery Plan, their population grew and continues to do so. Today, their numbers are considered healthy and stable because Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming met the population quotas for the species. As you can imagine, they were endangered in the first place because people would shoot, trap, and poison them mercilessly. Thankfully, researchers have been working very hard to try to change the image of the wolf, and people are slowly starting to see their value and stop fearing them. And although they're not yet protected by the Endangered Species Protection Act, which was denied after unsuccessful legal battles, Battles, some people are still fighting for better management practices. So hopefully, one day, the Rocky Mountains Wolf will be finally and forever out of the woods. Figuratively, of course. Number 1. Vancouver Island Wolf These wolves are amongst the most shy in the world. Anytime they sense that there's a person nearby, they will scatter in utter fear. But they have a particularity that really sets them apart from any other wolf species. They're actually incredibly good swimmers. Their main food source is, strangely or not, seafood, which makes as much as 90% of their food intake, with salmon being a quarter of their entire diet. When they're not fishing, they also like to forage on clams, river otters, barnacles, seals, and even whale carcasses. You could go so far as to say that the Vancouver Island Wolf is the fanciest of wolves. And of course, as the name suggests, they live on Vancouver Island, and it's estimated that there are only 180 left alive. They measure roughly 26 to 32 inches from paw to shoulder and 4 to 5 feet from nose to tail. They are quite elegant and slim, qualities that they probably need while fishing in the water. They usually come in a mix of gray, black, and brown, but there has been rare sightings of fully white ones, too. As you can see, wolves are very adaptable and come in many shapes and sizes. Some are big, others are smaller than an average dog, but they will all sadly disappear from this planet if we don't do something to help them. 
What about you? Which wolf from this list is your favorite? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.